My name is Busisiwe Catherine Siabe and I have an amazing story to tell. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. And how are you? I'm good, thanks. I am in need of a drink. Of a nice drink. cold one, please. What kind of drink would you like? Coca-Cola. A Coke? Yes, and of course. Yeah, I'm thinking you're going to say like, I want a whiskey now. Oh, that would be absolutely amazing, especially after the day I've had, but yes. let's keep it, let's so keep keep it there. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Would you like some ice with your drink? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So what kind of a day have you had that's it's so hectic that you need a whiskey a bit later? Um, well, I still have a couple of rubber bullets and police to dodge, but after that, we can definitely have that whiskey. Well, that's a very deep story. I think we'd like to hear more about that story. Uh, you want to hear about it? Are you sure? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you do become an accomplice at, well, at some point when I you mean, hear the story. I've got nowhere else to go. Oh, so thing. Um, the story is essentially about the Fees Must Fall movement. Um, I am a leader of the Fees Must Fall movement nationally, but I'm specifically stationed at Fitz University. And my name is Busisiwe Catherine Siabe, also known as Kit Kat, the chocolate of the revolution, the sweet thing, basically. Um, you would assume that I would be sweet, but I am anything but sweet. Um, unfortunately for the state apparatus and everyone else, who is on the side of denying us free quality decolonized education. So I come into Fees Must Fall like a servant, right? Because all I've known is to serve. So I come into Fees Must Fall and I start serving students, giving them and making sure that they have meals, they have water. Our leaders, you know, the top four, which we called the Fantastic Four at the time. Um, unbeknownst to me, I would then assume one of the positions of the leaders of the Fees Must Fall movement. And fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at the situation, really, I have been arrested, I've been shot, at, I have been banned from any academic institution in South Africa and more than anything else finding employment has become very difficult because every time you do a state security check on me I'm considered to be an enemy of the state. Now let's think about that and please let's look at me for a second. Do I look like an enemy of the state? I mean my earrings might be matchboxes but this is as radical as I get, right? <laughs> um, but lovely for me, uh, and I think one of the things that inspired me to join the Fees Must Fall movement was the call for quality decolonized education. So I'm a big educationalist, I love education. Um, and when I was growing up, I was taught that in order for you to access any and every opportunity in the world, you need to have an education. So rightfully so, I worked my ass off trying to get into an institution of higher learning. And fortunately for me, I was able to get into a couple of institutions, but I stuck to Wits University. And that's essentially where the trouble began. So I get to Wits and I meet these amazing young people who are passionate about being black and passionate about school and passionate about activism. And I think to myself, hmm, this could be an opportunity for me to delve into the 76 generation activities, right? So when Fees Must Fall started, I thought to myself, oh yes, we get to change the narrative about education and there gets to be another Hector Peterson that hopefully doesn't get killed, but can stand and represent majority of students in the country. So there I am serving students and making sure that everyone is fed all the buses that we need to go to the union buildings are equipped with food. So I'm essentially just a worker bee working very hard. And then the president announces a 0% increment. And for many people, that 0% increment was exactly what they thought we were asking for. But that's not what we were asking for. We were asking for free quality decolonized education. Now the issue is around the decoloniality of education because what does that actually mean, right? So a lot of us were just like, we don't want to learn about white people anymore. We want more African epistemology. We want to make, you know, mathematics and physics very African. And for a large extent, a lot of people just thought we were just saying things because we could, right? So the president announces a 0% increment and everyone decides it's time for us to go back to school, guys. It's time for us to go back to class. And you can't 
think about the Fees Must Fall movement without considering October 9. So October 9 was another branch of the Fees Must Fall movement, but that was specifically centered around workers, right? So the cleaners in our universities, the people who do our gardens, and everyone else that works at the university um, had started their own movement called October 9. So when we had gotten the 0% increment and all the students were ready to go back to class, the question then arose, what happens to a large part of our manifesto which called for certain resources to be given to workers, right? So workers should be able to use the toilets that they clean, to walk on the lawns that they mow, right? To be able to use those little facilities. So we get back to campus and everyone decides, okay guys, we're going back to class and I'm just like, but hold on a second, we're not done. We haven't even begun to touch the surface of what the Fees Must Fall movement is all about. I then decided with a couple of other comrades to stop an entire national soccer match. <laughs> so you guys know Mumish of the Week. Mm. You know Mumish of the Week that happens on like Soccer Zone. I was Mumish of the Week for a year. So anyone that comes after me, I am like the reigning queen at this point. So then we come up with this idea, um, Kaiser Chiefs was playing with Bidvis Vits on our campus. So we're having a conversation and I say to one of my friends, you know, it doesn't make sense that everything is continuing as normal when we don't have free quality decolonized education. So they're like, oh, we should disrupt that match. And I'm like, you do not need to ask me twice. I'm in. How do we do it? So we all strategize and we all find, you know, different entry points onto the field to disrupt this match. Unfortunately for me, I ended up being the only lucky one that made it onto the pitch, right? So imagine having a five foot long banner that's written free education. You're trying to run away from a security guard the players are looking at you like you're crazy and you're trying to open this banner in order for you to be able to remind the country that we still haven't achieved free quality decolonized education. So I'm running and as I run, I look back and I find no one there with me. It's crickets, guys, <laughs> crickets. No one is behind me, no one's in front of me. Everyone just stopped. And then I noticed there was a man who was chasing me and I was like, I could either let him catch me or we could, we could make this game a little bit more fun, right? Because I mean, what's the purpose of getting onto the pitch if you're not gonna do anything really? So then I started running in true fashion, as tiny as I am, I'm fast. I'm running all over the place. And then a player stops me and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what are you doing? We're all running for something. You're running for the ball. I'm running for free education. <laughs> What are we doing? Why are you stopping me? And by then, unfortunately for me, the security had already caught up with me and they dragged me off the pitch. And by that time, I could see my comrades screaming, free education. I'm like, yeah, I think you're a little late, but we're here now. But you know, we're here, but I think you're late. So they dragged me off the pitch and they, they lock me in a, a cell and they say to me, why did you run onto the pitch? And at that point in time, I had to think fast, right? I couldn't be slow about it. I could either say it's because of free quality decolonized education, but then I remembered I have a couple of outstanding warrants of arrest in my name. If I get arrested one more time, I'm going to jail, right? So I think to myself, let's, let's be creative about this. So I say, I wanted Sipu and Shabalala to just like write on his shirt, these must fall. So they're like, why couldn't you wait for the game to end? I was like, I mean, this is an immediate thing and I wanted people to see it while he was still playing. So my story is obviously not making sense and they arrest me. So I'm in the police cell and I remembered the comrades that were, you know, with me throughout the struggle of the Fees Must Fall movement. And what essentially reignited my passion for free education was when I heard thousands of students outside Hilbert Police Station refusing to go home without me. And that's when I realized that, okay, we, there's a lot more work that needs to be done and there's a lot more work that needs to continue. And luckily for me, the pressure from all those students was able to get me released. Released, yes, but I'm still banned from stadiums. Um, and I think that's a little fair because with me, you never know 
what could and couldn't happen. I think the state, unfortunately, has been at the other end of my political activity in the sense that, you know, there was a particular point in time where I got arrested on campus for asking a question which was ridiculous according to me. So a student was getting arrested and as a leader of the Fees Must Fall movement, I, went, I wanted to find out why are you arresting students because we were all being very peaceful. And when I got to the police officer, he said, yeah, we finally have you. We've been looking for you for days. And I'm like, I mean, we're all out here every day together. <laughs> What do you mean you've been looking for me for days? Um, and he arrests me and he puts me behind, um, you know, the police van. And at that point in time, my fingers are poking out and people are asking me what's going on. And I'm like, apparently I'm being arrested for asking too many questions. And for me, that reminded me of the moment when I had to go into hiding because the state security police were looking for me and other leaders. So at some point in time, we couldn't answer our phones, no one could know where we were. We had to have extra security around us, which is ridiculous, right? So think about having bodyguards, like grown big bodyguards for little girls like me who have a sharp mouth, yes, but more than anything else, have a bigger dream. Um, and I think the reason why fees must fall becomes such an important milestone in the history of our country, in addition to 76, is because we as young people understood the generational obligation that we had. And we were like, we're going to meet it, whether we have to die on these streets or not. And in many instances, many of us did, many didn't. And we still don't have the kind of free quality decolonized education that we wanted, but we have something and we can always work on something. So yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting day. <laughs> That's just for me anyway. Thanks guys. <laughs>